In this lesson, you'll be integrating auto-scrolling into the chat application, and to get this done, we're gonna start with a quick visualization to make sure we're all on the same page as to what we're working towards. Then we'll head into our client-side JavaScript and actually knock this out. So we have our lighter rectangle, which represents all of the content that's available, and then we have our sidebars representing what we're able to see. So in this case, the height for both is the same and we're able to see everything, and that's true. When our first message comes in, we can see it. And same with the second and in this example, the third. Now, when a fourth message comes in, the available content gets longer, but we're not able to see it. We need to scroll through the content to see the chat messages. In this case, what we're gonna have the browser do is automatically scroll the user to the bottom so they're able to view the most recent content. The same thing is true when the next message comes in. The next message comes in, we have more content available, and we scroll the user to the bottom so they can see that latest message. Now, this is great when the user is looking at the latest content, but what happens if I go searching through the chat history to see what someone said? So I manually scroll up to the top to see what someone said about when we're meeting or where we're meeting, and in this case, it would be really frustrating if every new message automatically brought me to the bottom since I've intentionally scrolled up looking for something specific. So in this case, we are not scrolled to the bottom, so when a new message comes in, we're not going to auto-scroll. We're only gonna auto-scroll when the user is viewing the most recent content, in this case, we're not. So if a new message comes in, our content gets longer, but we're not going to scroll them so they can keep looking at what they're looking at. Now, later on, if I was to manually scroll back to the most recent content, then I am scrolled to the bottom and we would auto scroll for new messages. So right here, I could go ahead and add a new message into the mix. And like we've seen before, you would get auto scrolled to the bottom. So we wanna make sure that users can look through that chat history without getting constantly interrupted. And we also wanna make sure that if someone's having a conversation with someone else, they're able to see the latest messages as they come in. Now that we know what we're working towards, let's go ahead and actually implement that into chat.js. Back inside of chat.js, we're gonna make some changes to our JavaScript code. The first thing we wanna do is figure out where we want to put all of this auto-scrolling logic. Now we wanna do this every single time we render a new message and we render new text messages right here in this callback function and new location messages down below. So instead of adding the logic into both locations, I'll just create a function that we call in both. Right here, a new constant called something like auto scroll is going to get the job done. This doesn't need any arguments and we're going to call it just after rendering our messages. So right here, after we render our text messages, I'm going to call auto scroll and I'm gonna do the exact same thing after rendering those location messages. Now, calling this function itself doesn't guarantee we're actually gonna be auto-scrolled, but it's at least going to run the logic and figure out if we should. If we should, it will indeed scroll us to the bottom. If someone was digging through that chat history, then we won't auto-scroll them, which is the behavior that we want. The first thing we need to do is get that new message element. That's going to allow us to run the calculation. So remember, at this point in time, the new message has already been added. So it's our job to figure out if they were scrolled to the bottom without this new message being in there, which means we need the height of the new message element. So right here, I'm going to extensively comment this function since it can be quite confusing. First up, let's go ahead and get the new message element. I'm going to create a constant called something like dollar sign new message using the dollar sign syntax since we're storing an element. And right here, we are going to grab messages and we are going to use its last element child property. That's going to grab the last element as a child, which would be the new message, since new messages are added to the bottom. 
So in this case, we have the new message element, and the next thing we need to do, which is going to take a few different steps, is to get the height of the last message. Actually, let's just call that the new message so we're using the same terminology. So we need to know how tall that message is. It's standard content, including extra things like its margin. So right here, what we're gonna do is start with the following. Constant, last, actually let's call it new, new message height. And this is going to equal the following. We're going to grab that new message element and we're going to use a property offset height. Now, this is a great start. The only problem is that this doesn't take into account the margin. Now, we have to run two extra statements in order to get that value. Now, you might say the value's hard-coded in our CSS, so can't we just hard-code it here as well? But that could cause problems if we choose to change these styles in the future. It would be really confusing to have to change that style. Then later on, you'd figure out auto scroll broke, but you wouldn't know why. So it's best to not hard code that value. Instead, we're gonna look at that new message element and figure out what that margin bottom we set was. Right here, I'm gonna create a variable, something along the lines of new message styles. And to get the computed styles for a given element, we use the global get computed style, which is made available to us by the browser. We pass to it the element. In this case, I'm trying to get the styles for the new message so we can figure out what that margin bottom spacing value is. Now let's go ahead and dump this to the terminal to see exactly what we're getting. So that's console.log, new message styles. I'm gonna go ahead and save the chat app I will refresh things over in the browser and open up the developer tools, cracking open the console. And right here we can see that the log we're looking for is from line 26, that is the log right here. If I crack that open, what do we get? We have a whole bunch of different properties. It starts off with a list of all of the available styles that were applied. Then we have them by name in alphabetical order. And if we scroll all the way down to M for margin, we can see that we have margin bottom with a value of 16 pixels. So in this case, that's exactly what we want to extract, though we want to convert it to a number so we can actually add it on to the offset height. Right here, let's go ahead and do just that. I'm gonna create a new constant called new message margin, and I'm going to start by using parse int. Parse int takes a string in and it parses it to a number. In this case, 16 as the string will become 16 as a number. And we're going to pass the value in. That is new message styles accessing margin bottom as we saw before. Now with this in place, we can go ahead and see what we get for that. So I'm going to log out new message margin to the console. I'm gonna save the file and refresh things from the browser. Right here, I have the number 16, which is great. All we're going to do is add that on right here. So new message margin. So we wrote a lot of code already. Let's quickly recap what we're doing. We grab the new message. We then go ahead and get the margin value. Then we take the margin and we add it on to the height of the message, getting its total height. And we store that right here in a variable that we're currently not using. Next up, let's go ahead and get the visible height. So the visible height is something that's not going to change often. So right here, as an example, the visible height, let's just say is 100 pixels. As I add new messages in, that doesn't change. As those messages go off the screen, that doesn't change as well. The amount of space I can view stays the same, even though the total content is a bit longer. So we need that value and we can get it with one line. Const visible height. I'm just storing things in a variable here to make it a little easier to work with. We are going to grab the messages element and we're going to access its offset height to get that value. Now, the next thing we need is the total height of that container. 
So in this case, the container height is much larger than the visible height as there are things I cannot see. So right here, let's go ahead and get that done. A new comment right here, height of messages container. We'll create a new variable for that as well. Something like container height or content height. And right here, we will once again, access messages. This time though, accessing a different property that is scroll height. So this gives us the total height we are able to scroll through. Next up, what we need is to figure out how far down we are scrolled. So are we up top? Are we down below? We need to figure out how far down we have actually scrolled in order to perform this calculation correctly. So right here, something like how far have I scrolled? We're going to store this in a variable, and this is actually the last variable we're going to create. I'll call it scroll offset. And we're going to start with the following. That is messages dot scroll top. Now, what exactly does scroll top give us? Well, it gives us as a number the amount of distance we've scrolled from the top. So in this case, it's zero. The top of my scroll bar is at the top of the a content I can scroll through. And if I scroll down, the value gets larger. So in this case, maybe it's something like 30, then 60, and so on. Now, what we really want is to know how far from the bottom we are, but there is no scroll bottom. So we're going to work around that by taking the scroll top, that is the distance between the top of the content and the top of the scroll bar, and we're going to add on the scroll bar's height, which is just the visible height of the container. That's going to give us a more accurate picture of how close to the bottom we are. So right here, we take the scroll top and we add on our visible height. Perfect. Now, with all of this in place, we're actually ready to perform a little bit of conditional logic. This conditional logic is going to run some code, and that code will scroll us to the bottom. Let's go ahead and talk about the condition. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our container height, so the total container height, not just what's visible, and we're going to subtract the height of the last message. So that would be new message height. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we want to figure out if we were scrolled to the bottom, but before this message was added in. If we don't account for this, we'll never be scrolled to the bottom because we're running this code just after adding the new message and the user would never get a chance to scroll down. So in this case, we're just taking the new message out of the mix. So we're seeing if that container height is less than or equal to, and in this case, it's going to be our scroll offset. So we want to make sure that we were indeed at the bottom before the last message was added. Now, if we were, that's great. We're going to auto scroll. If not, that's fine too. We're not going to auto scroll. To auto scroll, all we do is we use messages dot scroll top. Now we already used that to read its value, but we can also set its value. And in this case, we're going to set it to the scroll height, the total available content we can scroll. So right here, messages dot scroll height, and this is going to push us to the bottom. So we're setting a new value for how far down we're scrolled, how far down, well, all the way. Now with this in place, we should be able to test things out. Now it's important to note that a lot of the complexity here is to figure out if we were near the bottom or not, so we can provide the user with a nice user experience. If you wanted to just always scroll them to the bottom, this function would be just one line. It would be this line, always scroll to the bottom. In this case though, we do want to provide that nicer user experience, so it required a bit more code, but now that you know how to do this, you could perform this in all of your applications. Over in the browser, let's test things out. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and provide some messages. Right here, I can see that things are working as expected. Now the next message is going to get clipped, but we can see we do scroll to the bottom. Then I'll add five, six, and seven, and I'm scrolling to the bottom for all of those. Now I'm going to scroll up saying maybe I wanted to look through the history to see what the first message was. 
But during that time, someone else sends a message. In this case, we can just send it ourselves. I will send the message test exclamation mark. I send that off. It does get sent, but you can see we haven't been automatically scrolled down since we manually scrolled up. Now in the future, if I do scroll all the way down, I am now seeing test and for new messages, I would get auto scrolled so I can continue on with eight and then nine and I'm auto scrolled as expected. So this behavior just gives us a little more flexibility, allowing us to provide a nice UI for that user. And it's something that's gonna work even as we change the height and the width of the browser. So right here, I add another message in and it is still auto scrolling. Since we recalculate all of those values every single time, we perform that auto scrolling logic. Now, if you're not into the front end or the browser, this video might have been more frustrating than anything, but regardless, it is all done and we have auto scrolling set up. That's where we're gonna stop for this one. In the next lesson, we'll be deploying our chat app to production. So let's jump right into that.